G'day guys, this is Nick from stridewise.com and today I have a special guest on the channel, my buddy Troy Barmore because I really wanted to get a review of this really world famous tank of an unstoppable bulletproof twill jacket the ship John Wills jacket. Uh, the thing is they take a really long time to break in and a really, really long time to order. Fortunately, Troy's a good friend of mine. He's had his for three years and he's gonna give us a review of the ship John Wills jacket. And Troy's actually also a writer for the website, sidewise.com. And also he has a long story history working in like vintage watches and like high quality luxury eyewear. And he just really has a good grasp on like high quality handmade stuff. So Troy, you wanna, you wanna take it from here? All right, mate. You're, you're not Australian. I want to be. <laughs> so, does the 24 ounce Will's jacket stand up to its own legend? And is it really worth the category defying price and notorious wait times? Absolutely. The mighty Will's jacket, the advertising goes, is second to none. It's a bold claim, one that Chip John doubles down on with their company motto, Stuff That Holds Up. In recent years, the Portland, Oregon-based clothing company has been making some serious waves on Instagram and in the world of heritage workwear, but the 24-ounce Wax Twill Wills jacket is their flagship product. Ship John was started by Mike Elias, a former stonemason and leather worker, and from his time spent in hardworking jobs and environments, Mike found that none of the work coats and chore jackets he could buy were able to stand up to his use and abuse. As anyone who has ever worked on construction sites will tell you, a job site is where clothing goes to die. When it was started, it went by the name Tomahawk Portland, but the company was renamed to Ship John after the Ship John Shoal Lighthouse in New Jersey. And at first, its primary focus was on leather goods and backpacks. But on one fateful Sunday, Mike was inspired to take some of the 24 ounce wax twill that he used in building his backpacks and use it to make himself a jacket. After a few small tweaks to the basic design, along with the help of pattern maker Stephen Hurd, the Wills jacket was ready to take on the world. Well, sorta. Of. You see, already at this early stage, the Wills jacket had begun to garner a heavy amount of demand, but Ship John is a very small team. It's just Mike, Steven, and a handful of other folks that sew each jacket by hand. After that initial run of 15 to 20 prototypes and early pieces, the company opened up the books for a small pre-order of a dozen or so jackets. But when the website crashed and they ended up with a backlog of more than 50 orders, which took the better part of a year to work through, they realized they really had something. The jacket is made using an 18 ounce twill that is then waxed resulting in the final 24 ounces. And as you can see, even three years later, it still mostly stands up on its own. It's really heavy stuff. The fabric is sourced from a well-established fabric company in the USA and is made in tan, black, and a host of other colors that they're now rotating on a month to month basis, sort of the color of the month. Now, as you can see, this jacket is heavy. It's crazy heavy. It's hands down the heaviest jacket I've ever personally worn, including the insulated Carhartt coats I used to wear when I was working in construction. And when it first arrives, it is so thick it will stand up completely on its own, retaining its full rigid shape. It's kind of crazy to see. And the overall weight is not only because of the fabric itself, but also due to the heavy brass fast snap buttons, which you see throughout and the heavy brass YKK zipper. It's all extremely hefty stuff. Buttons in area of higher stress, such as on the cuffs or on the chest pockets, you know, the collar, all these sorts of areas are reinforced with these really nice leather washers, which again is a really nice touch. The Will's jacket is unlined as it's meant to be worn as a heavy duty work shell. And when I asked Mike his thoughts on that, he said that had it been lined, the jacket's usefulness might be limited in most climates and significantly hinder the movement of the jacket, which makes sense when you consider how stiff and heavy it is to begin with. Now, despite all of this, he did tell me that the company is planning to make a lined version at some point in the future. When you think of the wills in terms of a shell or a chore coat, rather than some sort of, you know, like a trucker jacket or something like that, the utility is absolutely fantastic. Especially when it's new, the wills is virtually waterproof and the wind doesn't stand a chance of cutting through. 
This is due to the heavy waxing that the material receives, but despite that, the inside of the jacket doesn't feel overly waxy or wet, as is the case with many, if not most, of the other waxed uh, jackets out there on the market right now. Even after over two years of heavy use, I'm now only starting to maybe begin to think about rewaxing it at some point. This jacket is an absolute beast and really feels more like armor than it does outerwear. It's super rugged and isn't the least bit dressy, which might be seen as a bit of a drawback for some. The front pockets are deep and comfortable and the chest pockets are large enough to fit usual items like pens or lighter or you know, earbud case, something like that, but aren't big enough to fit a full size smartphone in. On the inside of the jacket, you have this small, uh, kind of little bucket pocket going on here, which to be honest, doesn't really fit much at all. I usually keep like a little pocket knife or something like that clipped inside or a little notebook, something along those lines. Now, my only real complaint with this jacket, and this is really pretty nitpicky, is on the collar, these kind of points of the collar tend to curl up with use, which is a little annoying. Now, despite its 25 ounce weight, the Wills isn't restrictive to wear at all. And this is due to the brilliant pattern design and some little design touches throughout, including the sort of gusseted back area here on the back panel. Now, despite how stiff it is when it first arrived, once it's broken in, the jacket is extremely comfortable. Um, when it starts to get a little bit warmer, I even feel perfectly comfortable wearing it with just a t-shirt. Now, depending on how dirty you get it, the tan color really develops some super nice patina, especially on the sleeves here, where it gets a similar kind of character that you'd see um, like whiskering or stacking that you get on heavy raw denim, and it's just badass. Now, on to fit and sizing. Now, this is one of the most challenging parts of ordering the Wills jacket, other than, you know, actually being able to order one in the first place. But fortunately, the folks at Chip John have gone through a lot of trouble to make a very thorough sizing guide on their website that walks you through what to expect and how to measure other jackets you already own to get a baseline. When I ordered my jacket, they didn't have that whole sizing guide quite so well worked out. So my personal experience, it was, it was a little bit wild when I was trying to sort out my sizing. Initially, I had purchased a small long, as more often than not, I tend to swim in workwear. I'm a pretty lanky guy. But one day when I was on the subway in Brooklyn heading home from work, I noticed another guy wearing a particularly heavy wax jacket with very well-defined pleats on the back. Now at the time, there were maybe 50 of these in the wild. So it was pretty cool to see this on the subway. So I go over, I tap the guy on the shoulder and I said, you have a Wills. And he responded with nothing except a grin and yes, I do. So we began discussing our sizing and he shared with me that he'd had a similar kind of experience. He had ordered a small, but it was a little bit worried that it might be too small. I expressed my worry of that. We had this little awkward pause where he offered to let me try on his jacket, which of course I did. So there in the middle of the subway with our fellow New Yorkers looking at us like we were absolutely insane, I tried on this stranger's jacket and I am very grateful I did because the small was just a little more snug than I wanted it to be. I ultimately changed my order to the medium long so that I could layer under it a little bit better and I couldn't be happier with the fit. In general, I'd say the profile of the jacket is a bit more slim and fitted than something like Filson's tin cloth jacket, for example, which tends to be a little bit more boxy. And if you're like me and found that your measurements were right on the border of two sizes, sizing down will give you a bit more slender, trendier fit, whereas sizing up will give you a bit more of that true work jacket vibe and utility. Onto the price. Now, at just short of $500, the Wills jacket is a serious investment piece, pure and simple. Now, that payment is split into two with $250 paid upfront when you order the jacket, and then the remaining 248 paid just prior to the jacket actually shipping, which helps soften that blow a little bit. Now, at this price point, you're less in Filson and Flint and Tinder wax jacket territory and more in the Barber Bellstaff territory, much more in that kind of luxury price point. And while Barber and Bellstaff have more sort of luxurious details throughout, like that inner lining, corduroy on the cuffs and collar, to justify that price point a little bit, the Wills jacket doesn't have any of that finishing. 
but what it lacks in frills, it more than makes up for in heft and durability. Comparing the six ounce fabric of both the Barber and Bell staff to the Ship John's 24 ounce fabric, I mean, there's just no comparison. I mean, this thing is in a league all its own. Now, besides the price, the other hurdles you need to clear here are not only the wait time, but the ordering process itself. Ship John opens up their orders just once a month via their email list. So if you want a Will's jacket, make sure to subscribe to their newsletter and actually be ready to buy it fast. Normally when they put them up for sale, they sell out in minutes, if not seconds. Some pros and cons of the Ship John Will's jacket. First and foremost, the bomb proof 24 ounce twill is robust and it's extremely high quality. It, it feels like nothing else you're gonna wear. It's highly water and wind resistant, especially when it's new and fully waxed. It ages and develops patina beautifully. I mean, really, it, the, the more roughed up you make this thing, the more dirty you make this thing, the better. Now also, still in the pro category here, it's hard to come by, making your jacket that much more special and unique once you actually do get your hands on it. Cons. Now, the price, it, it is expensive. It's in a league all its own, especially for something that is this, uh, you know, rugged and utilitarian looking. You know, if you plan on roughing this thing up, which you should, you might not expect to spend this amount of money on it, but again, it's, it's in a league all of its own. There's no inner lining, which again, doesn't give you the most luxurious feel considering that price point. And the limited production makes it really difficult to get it in the first place. I mean, you will always see the comments on their Instagram about people bemoaning the fact that they've been trying to get one for years and they still can't. Now, because of the weight and the heft of this, it is too warm for year round wear. So you're sort of limited to those more transitional seasons. Finally, because of that rugged aesthetic, it's not dressy in the slightest. So if you're going to go to any kind of nicer venue, you might feel a little bit underdressed. From the first time I saw the Will's jacket on Instagram to when I was able to actually order one and then finally receive the jacket was damn near two years. And while Ship John continues to work their tails off to up the production to meet their demand without sacrificing any quality whatsoever, these jackets are still very hard to come by. Now, that difficulty is something that Ship John gets a lot of flack for, but I can tell you from personal experience, it is absolutely worth the wait, so don't lose hope. Fortunately, pre-orders happen much more frequently these days, and most folks will not have to wait quite as long as I did to get it. But again, to be perfectly honest, even after waiting two years to actually get one, it was completely worth it. Two years later since first receiving it, whenever it's cool enough outside, I still get that new toy feeling when I put it on. There's really just nothing else quite like it. So that does it for my review of the Ship John Wills jacket. For the full written review and some more pictures, see the link below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and subscribe to our newsletter. And I don't know, let me know. Are you waiting for a Wills jacket? Let us know in the comments below. The jacket's falling. All right. It's as good as it's gonna get.